could we be sitting here in 2025 debating whether Tesla is going to become a, a 10 or 15 million unit company? Yeah, we, we really possibly could. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be reacting to a couple of clips from analysts from Wall Street who've recently appeared in the finance media. The reason that I'm doing this is just to show you guys the shift in perception and understanding that's starting to happen around Tesla. Not just in the finance media, you know, the talking heads on CNBS, etc., but also the industry experts from the old world, the legacy automakers who've had their two cents to say on Tesla. But now also analysts after the price has just literally taken off and headed towards the moon and beyond. By the way, link in the description to merch if you're interested. Now they're saying, wait, what did we miss? What have we missed? They're taking a second look and really starting to understand the story. So I thought these two clips were a great way to show two independent analysts from different firms drawing their own conclusions about Tesla, having a little bit deeper of an understanding than most of the analysts we've been used to seeing in the finance media for the last couple of years. So let's have a look at what they had to say. Hey guys, if you'd like to help out the channel and get up to two free stocks, check out the links in the description to Weeble and Stake. Let's get back to it. Joe, thank you so much for being with us, Joseph. So um, I know you raised your target. And look, it, it's like you raise it and it keeps going. I mean, what is going on here? Does Tesla deserve to be a $2,000 stock? Um, well, obviously, my current price target is $1,500. i am I'm not and, and cannot speculate about what I'm going to do next. What, what I would like to do is try and give people a little perspective. I think people didn't fully appreciate the fact that this was becoming a major industrial enterprise. And now, you know, I listened to, to one of your earlier speakers, you know, talking a couple of years out. We did say, you know, I think this can be a $100 billion top line company in a couple of years. And I, I think you're seeing the market get to grips with that reality. What makes Tesla so special? Well, I think what makes them special is that they have gotten to this market and they have demonstrated that they can make electric vehicles at scale while at the same time. And I keep on saying this when I look around, you know, GM, Ford, Toyota, who, who has battery electric vehicles that can compete with this company? And the answer is really nobody, right? The only company that's maybe going to have something decent next year is, is going to be Volkswagen. So you look and you say, gosh, right, this company is still less than a million units a year in a global market that's you know, 70 million, and they could get a whole lot bigger. They could be selling multiple millions of units. And it's not clear to me that anyone is, is going to be able to, to stop them. And again, I think that's what the market's starting to figure out here. Could not have said it better myself. Again, this is the value transfer we're starting to see now where people are realizing not where Tesla is today, where they will be in two years, three years, five years, 10 years. What I find people do sometimes in looking at charts and thinking about the, the very short term is, is to miss the bigger picture. I, I've been at this a long time, right? I, I covered Intel when that company was driving into to enterprises. I covered uh, digital photography when that was just starting. This is a fundamental transformation in a major business. You know, by 2030, there are going to be a lot more battery electric vehicles on the road than, than there are now. And the, the incumbents, the, the big companies, the big European and Japanese and American companies just cannot get their act together. And that's the story, right? I think if you understand that, if you say, I want to short a company that is realistically going to be, you know, 100, 110 billion dollar company, fine. But that's why you short it, not because of the way the chart looks today and you know, because of what you think of Elon, right? This is a fundamental right, transformation right. that you know, doesn't come along that often. You, you know, you mentioned this briefly at the top. Um, we believe that it's reasonable to expect Tesla to be a $100 billion company by 2025, shipping approximately yeah. two and a half million units a year. So seeing that expansion mm -hmm. happening um, and you, what you're important to note, you're just saying what a small portion it is of the global market. Uh, you know, two and a half million units is a small portion of the global auto yeah. market. I'm thankful to you for these stats, Joe. This is great stuff. So now what happens going forward? Two and a half million units is a small portion. Then what? What happens in 10 years from now? Well, they, they could get a lot bigger. Um, and I'm, I'm going to give you a, another example. Again, I was covering Intel when that company just was was selling desktop processors and and the enterprise at that point was dominated by companies like sun and ibm and people said there's no way ever you know that we're going to have the enterprise and server farms based on intel processors well guess what they completely dominate that market right so could we be sitting here in 2025 debating whether tesla is going to become a 
a 10 or 15 million unit company? Yeah, we, we really possibly could because I, gosh, I, I can't see how some of the incumbents can shed these enormous supply chains and, and cost structures they've got and figure out how to compete with them. One, one related point, one of the best competitors to Tesla I see right now is, is not even an incumbent, it's Rivian. Um, that pickup truck's awesome. It's better than anything that, than any of the big existing companies have fielded. I just want to highlight one thing here. When was the last time you heard an analyst talking about Tesla discussing them doing volume in the millions of vehicles per year in the next five years? This is a huge shift. Now, analysts are really looking into the future and realizing, wow, they are building these gigafactories at exceptionally fast pace. They're ramping really quickly. They're improving from factory to factory, from product to product. Where does this take us in the future? Holy crap. And Drew made a really good point talking about Intel too, basically saying that I've seen this happen before. Everyone's saying, oh no, there's no way they're ever going to dominate that market. Next minute they are. So keep that in mind. Bit of a reference, this may be something playing out that he has seen before. All right, now let's watch the next clip with Dan Ives. What do you make of the sharp rise though, and then sharp pullback as the stock has been rising over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I think just a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction in, in light of some of these second wave fears. But but net net, you look at Battery Day combined with what's going to happen with earnings and profitability in S and P 500. Right now, $2,000 could be on the near-term horizon for the stock, despite some of these COVID storm clouds. I think Battery Day is going to be a potential game-changer for the story and even for, for the EV space, because I do believe the million-mile battery gets announced. And I think it's important because this, along with some other technology enhancements in terms of more price parity, and that's something that's going to enable Tesla to actually continue to cut some prices on, on some of these cars, gives them more flexibility. But net, net, when you look at it, the moat that they've built from a battery perspective, combined with what we're seeing in the deliveries, and right now in the EV market, it's Tesla's world and everyone else is paying rent. <laughs> that was so good from Dan. I'm going to quote that in the future. Brilliant. Sums it up perfectly, honestly. And you're Seeing investors, because of the scarcity value for the EV space, continue to push shares higher. And I don't see that slowing down, given what we're seeing deliveries, especially out of China. Meantime, you've got earnings around the corner. How important will profitability be, given that Tesla is very close to joining the S&P 500? And analysts have big expectations. Yeah, I think if you look at the 90,000 number from a delivery and, and do some math there, it looks like right now that that will be profitability, which is important for the S&P 500. I think what you're also going to see is institutionally speaking, much more of a buy-in right now from an investor perspective, which is key to the sort of next leg higher in Tesla. I think earnings in general, in terms of guidance, it continues to be a lot of volatility uh, in, in terms of near term. But I think investors are looking on the other side of the dark valley, how quickly can you see a bounce back, back to what I believe could be a trajectory to a million deliveries in 2022? And there we are, that magic million plus delivery number again. It's great to see analysts looking out into the future and actually thinking, where is Tesla going to be? Not tomorrow, not next week, not next quarter. Where are they going to be in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years time? Which is why China is the linchpin. We think 150,000 units first year at uh, the gates. And then you look at Europe and the Berlin factory, you look at India and some other areas. These are going to be key to the next leg of this growth story in Tesla. I think that's what the stock's starting to bake in, is more investors starting to see far through the trees in terms of where the EV market could go as they execute. Completely agree. The market now is really starting to see out into the future and realize what a clear run Tesla has it easily getting to huge volumes and dominating the EV market for at least five to 10 years. They're going to have a huge slice regardless. Even if other people do exceptionally well at competing, Tesla really is so far ahead. It's great to see the analysts putting the pieces together and actually sharing their thesis, their analysis, because right now people who are looking at Tesla are not thinking too deeply, are just getting stuck. Oh geez, their deliveries compared to Toyota or Ford, how are they worse? It just doesn't make any sense. A little bit of food for thought. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. And this is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. And don't forget your free stocks with Webull and Stake. Links in description.
Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can continue creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. And you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.